All right. So welcome back, folks. For, for those of you who are here for the first time, uh, this our channel, what we do, kind of go through a couple of how-to tips of taking care of your cleaners. Some of you are here to, to save money and to, uh, to try to do things yourself, which is good. Some of you are just curious. A lot of times you just kind of want to tackle things on your own rather than pay um, the actual cost of uh, repair. I mean, if you can do it at home, try it first, right? Especially doing a kind of a tight economy kind of thing. But um, still, stick around. Um, stick stick with me through this walkthrough, okay? Uh, it's going to be a little bit slower because I want to explain the way I see the, the process and how I go through uh, troubleshooting uh, because part of that is really understanding what the machine is, is, is trying to do, okay? So I go back to kind of a basic... Um, understand is like what is this machine telling me what does it want and then I can tell what's being interrupted so stick around and now uh, we'll walk through this thing together okay so let's wait ready for the deep dive say yeah and okay so all right so let, let's start from the beginning what we're doing right now is um, looking at a Bissell 2x now this is just kind of a template of um, of a system if you understand the relationship between the motor the pump solenoids um the spray in action it makes it a lot easier for you to diagnose what's going on okay so let's let's <laughs> let's take this first scene i'm gonna tell you what i what i experienced when i first saw when i op opened up my first uh Bissell, uh pro heat um uh, it was like oh my gosh no way and i'm probably sure some of you had that experience right like what what am I looking at here, right? <laughs> so this is the basic uh, setup of a Bissell um, uh, 2X. Now, this is I think this is the 9200. They, they have a, some variations when it comes to the 94. There, there are a few more solenoids involved. But let's start from the beginning, okay? Uh, let's see if we can take a look at, like, a basic schematic uh, of one of these, and then we'll go from there, okay? Um, this is a very basic schematic of the 9200. Now, if you look at it, uh, what we see is, well, the motor would be about right, right about here, okay? And this is the duct. So when you sit the tank on top of the Bissell, uh, a part of that clean water, dirty water tank, because it's a combo, it, it's going to sit, uh, the suction area is going to sit right up, right here. Now, on this, if you know the Bissell, in the back is where you put your solution um, tank, that small little tank. This is this section right here, okay? And um, and then you know you have a heater and everything else. But let's start from the top. All right. Let's 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 start from what what is the motor doing, and then uh, what is it asking the the pump to do, and we can go from there. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to break this down in such a way that uh, will make it really easy for you to understand. All right. Okay. So this is everything without all of the lines and everything else, so you can identify the parts. All right. So we have our air duct. We have our solenoids, we have our pump, okay? This little controller here is, that's the knob um, on top of that Bissell when you do that turn, okay? Uh, it's, it's like a valve, you know, this little controller. I call this controller because it's like the mixer because when you turn it from more solution, midway, you know, like rinks, things like that, what it's doing is that, it's applying pressure on these spring-loaded valves here, and it's cutting off the solution. It's allowing more water in, less solution in, more solution in. That's what this is doing, okay? That's all it's doing. It's just by turning this uh, knob, you, it, it has, like, uh, layers kind of, you know, so as you turn it, it'll the next layer goes down, it pushes it further. The next layer goes down, it pushes it further. And all it's doing is cutting off the solution, okay, and allowing just water to flow. The moment you turn this machine on, all right, the very moment you turn the machine on, the suction is going to start in here. This is going to hit the pump, right? Okay? You see this right here? There are two tubings that's connected to the uh, the shaft right here, this uh, um, air duct. Okay? Now, the top one is more like a cooling system. Okay? It goes down to the pump, and it's, what it's doing is it's pulling air away from this section of the pump that has all of the um the electricity and everything is turning that a little mini motor so what it's doing is it wants to keep it cool so it's pulling air 
away from it. Okay, so it's, it's a cool way to utilize the motor. Motor is generating suction the moment you turn it on, right? This is without pressing the trigger, without going any further. The next tubing here, if you notice, it goes to the back of, um, well, I'm sorry, the very top of the pump, all right? Now we're generating suction, all right? Let me uh, see if I can highlight this a little bit better for you. Actually, let's see if we can get, to get, get a close-up of it, okay? All right, so what it's doing here, okay? Let me, let's see if we can do this. So it's cooling right here, okay? And then it's generating some vacuum pressure now in your pump, right? All right, now, if you notice back here, it's cut off. This entire section right here, okay? This is where, where it says vacuum pressure. That's where all that vacuum pressure is being done, all right? And then it now it's now pulling, and it's going to make its way over to the controller section here, the smart clean valve assembly, right? And now it's being dispersed. It's going to ask for, for a solution from your solution tank. And then it's also going to ask for a solution from the clean water tank. All right? Okay? Here we go. So the moment the vacuum turns on, this action is happening. It's going to stop pulling water. Okay, it's going to start pulling solution. It's really kind of like having it at bay. And that valve is like a dam. It's like waiting for you to press the trigger to say release. Okay, this solenoid right here, right that, is just like a dam. It's just waiting for you to press the trigger. There are two, um, three uh, wires that are connected to this. You have your neutral, you have your ground, and you have your um, your live wire. So the moment you press the trigger, it tells this to open up and allow the water to flow towards the tips, okay? So keep that in mind. So a little recap, right? You turn the unit on, the motor turns on. The motor turns on, suction is being generated. Suction now, because of the, the way they designed it, the motor here is pulling, okay? Don't worry about this top one, that's just the cooling system, okay? It's pulling right here. It says, hey, I want, I want water. I want whatever is in your path, okay? It goes through the tube, okay? It's asking the solution to come, come, come join the party, okay? And then it continues. See that? It goes down. And then it's asking the clean water tank, hey, I want some water, all right? So when the water starts to travel, okay, the water is coming out and it's going to go inside of the heater, okay? The water goes in the heater on this side, travels through the heater. It comes out of the heater, okay, and is dispersed. It's going now to the the top, is going to the hose, and is going towards the floor. All right. The solenoid is going to keep it at bay until it's time. All right. And with the um with the with the with the hose, it's really getting a rush right to the hose. Okay. And it's at bay until you squeeze the trigger in your hose, all right? So that's why when you're shampooing the carpet, water is not just pouring out of the of the hose. It's waiting until you squeeze the trigger, okay? But we're not we're not talking about the hose right now. Right now, I kind of want to focus on the floor, all right? Uh, let's see if I can move this up a little bit. Here we go. Now, take a look at this, okay? So the water's going to the floor. So the, sometimes when you have a, a spraying problem, it's just these tips here. You just have to, you know, um, unhook your clamps, clean out, the the um the tips here and then the water's flowing fine if you did this first okay and then it's still not spraying the next logical step would be okay and i i always check the tank first anyway i want to make sure that when i press the um the bottom of the tank i want to make sure that when i press that little button there at the bottom of the tank the water just flows out freely okay if the water's flowing out freely that means when the um the, the the valve here is asking for water. The, that water should just flow through the system. There shouldn't be a problem, right? Okay. Um, now, the solenoid, if that's malfunctioning, which in these cases, in these bristles, the solenoid is probably going to malfunction uh, probably before the pump malfunctions, honestly. The solenoid is probably the thing that needs to be changed out. Every time I change the pump, I just automatically change the solenoid as a, as a, as a matter of... Um, just protocol, you know, change the pump, change the solenoid, all right? If your solenoid is like a tan color, a pinkish color, a blue color, most likely it's an older version and 
The newer ones are more like a black and white with silver or something like that, okay? That's kind of what you should be looking at if you have a brand new solenoid, right? All right, and you see that? So now look at where the obstructions happen in, the, in your system when you're working, okay? If, you're, if your uh, heater is clogged up, it's gonna interrupt the flow, even if the pump is good, okay? Okay, from the clean water tank, okay? Remember, it's not going to touch the heater yet. It's going to go through this whole path right here. Okay, it's going to it's going to continue mixing with your solution because the solution is being called also. Now they join together, and they're heading this way. They're going to the pump, and they're going to get shot out the front of the pump. They're going inside the heater, and if there's any obstruction here, it's not going to go any further. Okay. So if the heater is clean, now the heater has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws that if you go in and unscrew the heater, it should give you, let me put on my glasses because I'm having a little tough time here. There you go, guys. See, I'm, I got my glasses on. All right. Uh, then, uh, then sometimes just cleaning your heater will take care of it. Okay, you clean out the heater, all of a sudden everything is flowing fine. Uh, and I recommend that if you do go in and clean out the heater and you get all that gunk out, don't leave the clips on when you first try to spray it because you're going to have a lot of that gunk that's still in there that you just want to kind of have it blow through the system, okay? And and when you're going to notice that if you take your tips off and you press the trigger, a lot of little white pellets will just get spewed out, okay? All right? And then when, when you can press the trigger and all that stuff and just clean water is coming out, then you can put your tips back on, okay? I know I sound repetitive, but it's really understanding what what this machine is asking okay what is it asking me to do it, it seems a little complicated for these units but all the units are really doing the same thing the the motor is assisting the pump and extracting the water from the tank and from the solution some of these machines the tank and the solution is built into one okay so you really just have one connector that's pulling it down some of them they want it to be separate OK, in this particular case, it's separate. All right. OK, the way this is set up right now. All right. And if you have questions on this, you can you can definitely because, um, you know, you, you, you do your best on these things to explain it properly. But sometimes the wording, a particular word I might I may use a particular way of expression may not convey it properly. I'm, I'm really, really doing my best to see if I can do it. So I'm thank you for your support. Uh, you know, if you haven't done so already, you know, please uh, make sure you hit the notification bell. So when we do put up a new video, uh, you can get notified right away. And uh, and if you like, please subscribe to the channel, share this video if you can help someone. 